just a little bit of a glare. All right, I can fix that. All right, it's actually not that bad though. I'm impressed. Move that back just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's not. It's a little bright up here. Sorry, y'all. I'm talking through my setup. I'm not mad. Okay, I'm trying out a new white glass mat tonight. Um, so I am, this is the first time I'm doing a Facebook Live with it. So I'm just trying to see like reflection wise how we're doing. And I know it's a little brighter up in the corner up here, but I don't think I would call it a full blown glare. So I'm happy. Okay, okay, sorry. Sometimes you get the inner monologue coming out. So here it is. Hello, hello everybody. I know I started about a minute or so early. We'll give it a minute or two for everyone just to kind of hop on. And then we're going to get into some fun holiday crafting tonight. And it's going to be a no Copic marker Facebook Live again. But this time we are using stamped images. And I'm going to show you, honestly, I don't even know with this stamp set that I'm using if I would prefer coloring them with markers. Because I think this way is just so darn cute. So... I will give you a little bit of detail about that shortly, but if you are stopping by tonight, drop a quick comment just to say hello, and we will get started very, very soon. Oh, I get some water. I need to put some papers away eventually. This big roll, oh my goodness, I have a huge roll of double-sided adhesive on my craft station right now. That can get put off to the side too. All right, we're gonna get started in just a second. Like I'm saying, if you guys are here tonight, drop me a quick comment just so I know to say hello to you. And we're gonna have some fun with the Gingerbread Pal stamp set. Let me grab it. It's actually not the most pleasant looking at the moment because most of my images are missing from it. And I'll explain why shortly, but we're going to be using the gingerbread pal stamp set. We're going to be using all of the images tonight. And I am going to be showing you a very fun way to go ahead and color this up. Why are we, hold on, what are we doing? Make sure nothing's frozen. All right, let's see. Let's make sure we're good. All right, I do think we're okay. For whatever reason, my screen is being a little glitchy. If I have to grab my MacBook, I will. Um, but yeah, let's get started on some fun crafting. Hello, Gina, happy holidays. She says, what is your secret to no glare? That's always a problem for me. I have no strategy right now as to why I don't have a glare. Um, <laughs> right now, I think what's going on is that because my lights, I can move them a little bit further away from my craft station. I think that's helping me. And I am having a very difficult time today with my Facebook Live on my iPad. So I'm gonna grab my laptop and set that up really quick and I'm gonna use that for the live. And I am heading back and I'm going to set this up off to the side on my desk and use this for tonight's live. I'm just going to have to make a little bit of space. My iPad is usually how I keep track of everybody's comments and it is not working very well tonight. I don't know if my computer needs to do an upgrade or my iPad rather. Oh, sorry about this. All right. Good thing I got started early because now I'm late. So let's get on and have some fun. All right, so we are going to be using the Gingerbread Pal stamp set tonight to do a little bit of crafting. And we're gonna start actually with the background because I do wanna let it dry a little bit. So I've gone ahead, I've taken some blending cardstock and I have cut it down to a uh, four inches by five and a quarter. So a little bit smaller than your standard um, uh, card front. So a little smaller than A2. 
And we're just gonna do a little bit of ink blending along with some splattering. So let me go ahead and start some blending. I've got some Kitsch Flamingo. And we're gonna go in and just kind of lightly color up the edges with this. I don't need it super dark. I just wanna add a little bit of color so it's not such stark white paper. I am so sorry about my technical difficulties. Are we having issues? All right, I don't, if anyone's having any issues, cause my laptop's being a little funny as well. I don't know if Facebook's having any sort of glitches today because my screen keeps kind of freezing on my iPad. My computer screen just conked out. So I'm sorry if we're having any technical difficulties, please let me know, drop a quick comment so I can see it. I don't really know how to fix that but let's hope it's just Facebook being glitchy tonight because I know the internet in my house is fine. I've been streaming no problem today. We just actually upgraded our internet speed with the new modem a couple weeks ago. Cheryl says it's okay, perfect. I don't know what's going on. Maybe then it's just, oh my gosh, my account, I don't know. I tell y'all with this stuff with social media, it drives me nuts. All right, so I'm gonna take some of this Kitsch Flamingo, smush it, wet it, and pick it up with a brush. Just do a little bit of light splatter. I'm not gonna do too much because I'm gonna do three different colors. So that's Kitsch Flamingo. Next, let's do, we're gonna move on to Candied Apple. Wet it. I've also found recently that using Distress Oxides for splattering, they dry a little bit quicker. All right, and you know what? I actually, when I sprayed the water, I got a bunch of red on here, but it's not that bad. It adds a little bit of extra to it. So that's nice to know. All right, and then let's go ahead, smush down a little bit of cracked pistachio as my final color for splattering. And I guess I got a delivery. All right, just a fun little background. Perfect. So we've got this background ready to go. I'll bring it up a little closer for y'all to see. I've done some splattering with Candied Apple Kitsch Flamingo and along with Cracked Pistachio. I also, because I sprayed my Candied Apple ink very close to my panel, it like sprayed onto the panel, but it doesn't look bad. I'm gonna work with this. So I'm gonna set this off to the side and then I'm gonna show you guys how I like to use stamped images of gingerbread cookies and color them up. So I have all of my characters from Gingerbread Pals all on the side of my Misty door. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have a piece of cardstock that I grabbed from my stash. I believe the color is called Honey Mustard and it's by Tailored Expressions. Um, I think that's what this is. I really hope I'm not wrong. I'm pretty certain that's what this is because I do see a little bit of yellow in here um, that makes me think that I'm correct because I feel like this is kind of like a burnt honey mustardy sort of color. So that's the colored paper that I settled on. I'm not saying this is what I typically use for gingerbread cookies. I'm just saying this is what I typically have. This is what I currently have in my stash that I feel like worked best and I, it does a good job. So I'm gonna take my anti-static tool do, 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 just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got my watermark embossing pad by Kindred Stamps. I'm gonna go ahead, let's move these oxides out of the way, and I'm just gonna start smushing it down. Hello, Heidi, I'm glad that you hopped on. You missed my technical difficulties, but now my laptop seems to be okay. Maybe I 
I'm gonna jinx myself, I'm gonna have issues, but well, we are good to go right now. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna grab my pressure tool and press this down so I get a nice, even pressure. I am standing up while I do this, so that's helping. All right, and I know I need to do this a couple more times. I'm actually gonna have to plug my laptop in shortly too because it was low on battery to begin with. It's just a series of events tonight, y'all. All right, ooh, see, and it's getting nice and dark. I think I'm gonna do one more bout. I like to usually keep my lines sort of thin and crisp, but because of the nature of this project, I'm not so worried about it. All right, perfect. So we've got all of our gingerbread characters. Now I am gonna go ahead, I'm gonna work kind of fast and take my magnets off. And I'm gonna grab my snowfall embossing powder and we're just gonna go ahead and cover these. Tap off the excess. For whatever reason, my little male mouse in the bottom did not get the cleanest application, but we'll make it work because I'm not actually gonna use these. Um, but you get the gist. So we're gonna go ahead, put all of my embossing powder back. And I've gotta do a heat set. Let's put the lid on before I have a problem because I am prone to problems with my embossing powders. All right, I'm gonna set this deck off to the side and plug in my laptop for some battery. All right, that's charging. Let's grab my heat gun. And this will take a minute or so to do. I apologize about the background heating noise. See, we've got a couple questions. Kathy asks, which embossing powder gives a smooth look? I have one company and it didn't give me smooth coverage. Um, so all embossing powders are going to have a raised texture. There's not gonna be one that goes flat if that's what you mean by smooth. What I, I kind of, um, I personally stay away from embossing powders that have glitter in them if I'm doing it to emboss an image. Um, or sentiments that have very fine letters in them because I find that the glitter bits in a embossing powder are not as fine as the embossing bits. So I like to keep any sort of glittery embossing powders for like chunky sentiments or actually to like smudge word die cuts and then just sort of use the embossing powder on that. Um, Kindred has very good embossing powders. This, this is their Snowfall White. I like it a lot. Um, in terms of other companies, I wouldn't know off the top of my head um, which ones other people recommend, but I know if you're looking for a good white, I stand behind the Snowfall uh, Embossing Powder by Kindred. It's a good one. Um, there's a couple, and get, the other thing too, okay, this is like the truth about embossing powders, is that unless you're looking for an like a, a metallic look, 
Your best bet is just to get a clear embossing powder and stamp your sentiments in a colored pigment ink that takes a while to dry. Um, one of my biggest tips is I have one of the inks that I love using. Let me grab it for you guys. I, gra I use all the time this Versifying Claire ink in Nocturne, which is the black color. And then I will use it with clear embossing powder. And it is, this gives me such a clean impression and it takes a while to dry. So it's perfect for embossing. Once I emboss on top of it, it locks in that color. It dries it essentially because you're heat embossing over it. So that's one of my like biggest tips is that if you're looking to just have like standard inking, um, get yourself a couple good pigment inks like the Versifying Clear and get clear embossing powder. You're gonna get fantastic results. What else do we have? Karen, I'm, so glad, I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you have a wonderful night. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to stop by for a full one in the future and you can catch the replay on this, of course. Heidi says, is there a really good white ink that you could use if you didn't want to emboss? I have such problems finding good, solid white ink. Um... I don't really, so the thing, if you're gonna use a white ink, it has to be a pigment ink. I have heard a lot of good things about unicorn ink from Hero Arts. Um, that's the one that comes to mind, but I, I believe I own it, but I don't use a white ink almost at all. Um, so I'm probably not super helpful with that, Heidi. One thing though that I recommend, um, invest in good white gel pens. Because, let me show you, I have, okay, these are Jelly Roll by Sakura. These are the number 10 size. Whenever I have issues with heat embossing, I can just go in and use my gel pen and touch it up. Like, it's not going to look 100% perfect, but it's going to look better than before. So, these are number 10 Jelly Roll inks by Sakura. Love them in white. They are fantastic. I use them all the time. I actually use them too whenever I'm coloring on white paper to correct um, any time I go outside of the lines. So it's great for that too. Kathy says, sorry, I meant it doesn't give me full coverage despite it being fine detail. Honestly, a lot of embossing powders won't. Um, unless you're gonna like emboss it twice a lot of embossing powders, I feel like if it's a larger area, it's hard to get consistent color results with it. Now, I could be wrong. Um, I'm going off my own personal experience, but it, it is hard sometimes with embossing powder to get like 100% perfect results. But that's why I like using embossing powder the most when it comes to either just like a simple sentiment because each individual letter I can typically get pretty good coverage on. Um, that, that's usually where I find myself going with it. But typically when heat embossing, the larger the image you're trying to heat emboss, the less likelihood that you're going to have a perfect result. All right. Now, all right, let's move on. So I've got these. I would typically take the time now to fussy cut these out, but I've done that in advance. So I have them ready to go. And what we're going to do, I have three that I'm going to ink blend with you because I'm going to show you guys how to go from this, like this little cookie, to this. And you guys can see there are some differences in terms of the shading of them that's really gonna make your image look more like a baked cookie. So what I'm gonna use, I have the Grip Mat. This is one of the ones from Waffle Flour. And I'm gonna go in and let's put this down. like this. Awesome. Put these off to the side. Use them later. And then I'm going to take the three images I still need to ink blend. And I'm going to go ahead and put them on here. And then I'm going to grab some vintage photo, distress oxide ink, and a small brush blender. This size worked really nicely for me. So I recommend a smaller tool because these are smaller images. And you're just going to go in 
and you're just gonna emboss around, or um, ink blend around the edges. Now you are gonna notice that your white embossing powder is gonna turn that vintage photo color. And don't worry about it. Embossing powder, because of the nature of how it's designed and how it is just the texture and uh, material of it in nature, it's meant to resist ink that's on top of it that's not like a staining ink. Oxides are the furthest thing from a staining ink because they are water reactive. So when I'm done, I'm gonna be able to take a craft towel and just really easily clean these up. Just gonna go in. And also to, um, Kathy, I know in talking about embossing powder, I'm not saying lose all hope with it. I use embossing powder all the time. I just, with how much I have used embossing powder, I have stopped the pursuit of perfection. Um, I believe that you should invest in a good anti-static tool. I think that's really going to amp up your embossing game. Um, and just get your, make sure that you're ink is not too dry it's a good ink and that you do still have to replace it from time to time i've heard before as well that it's you're almost better off buying new ink pads rather than re-inking too where is my towel there we go all right so let's clean that up so just to show you i can go in with my towel and clean all this embossing powder up Just like that. All right, so let's clean each one. These grit mats, I don't use them that much if I'm going to be honest, um, but I really like them for adding a distressed edge and ink blending die cut images or smaller images because it helps hold them in place. So that's, for me, my primary use, but it's not something I'm reaching for all the time at the moment, but that could always change. There's a couple on the market right now. Um, I, so they're, they're a good thing to keep in mind. I know there are some sticky mats out there too. They're not the same product, but they have similar goals. All right, let's clean this up. Similar uses, I guess, is what we'll go with. Hello, Heather. Oh yes, you can put these right into your Misty. That is true, Kathy. Let's put this back. I don't know when I stained this because it's slightly pink, but Still works just the same. All right, put this mat back. And then I also have to clean my stamps over here because I want to heat and boss a sentiment using my stamp cleaner. It's a really good stamp set and I did fussy cut them all out in advance. Um, I was kicking myself too because I'm like, oh, Justin, maybe you should bring out your scan and cut. I haven't used my scan and cut in well over a year because I've just gotten more into die cutting and fussy cutting is not something that bothers me. I kind of find a little bit of peace in it. And it's one of the few things in crafting that I found that I can do decently as like a multitask, like multitasking, doing something else at the same time. So let's go in. Put all of our little images back. I'm glad I'm getting an opportunity to use this set before the holidays. I actually did a Facebook Live. It was either two or three years ago, and it was right around this time of year. And I did, with the National Gingerbread Cookie Day set, I did the same technique, but I'm not making the same card design. Um, but I just I love, I love crafting with gingerbread cookies. They're so cute. And then I would recommend too, if you're coloring them with Copics, I feel like anywhere with, with, with like e, E3s or E9s would work really nice for a good gingerbread color. All right, so next what we're gonna go ahead and do 
is we're gonna do a sentiment. So I've got some red cardstock that I'm putting in and I'm going to use the sentiment that says, baked with love. So we're gonna go ahead and let's do some heat embossing. So we're gonna put out some anti-static powder. I'm gonna go ahead. Sometimes I like to pick it up first and then I'm gonna use my Kindred Stamps embossing ink. All right, baked with love. Let's make sure this turns out okay. Snowfall embossing powder. That's pretty good. Doesn't get too much better than that. I need to get myself some good coffee filters to help clean up my embossing powders. All right. So, clean this up, grab my gun. This dry off a little bit and then just for you Kathy I am gonna bring this image up a little bit just so you can see the sort of coverage I get with it cuz I, I really think that embossing powders are hit and miss but I stand behind my kindred stamp snowfall embossing powder see I've got really really good coverage not a lot of static clean I got a little bit right there but I'm actually gonna fussy cut this out but if you look around the bend of the L right here it's a very little bit of ripply, so I wouldn't call it like 100% perfect, but honestly, it's so small of a detail, it's perfect to me. All right, so let's go in, I'm gonna go ahead, brush off the powder. And this is just some good weight red cardstock from my stash. Clearly I'm using a scrap. Also having some dry skin on my hands lately, so fussy cutting hasn't been the most simple of tasks lately. But that's okay. All right, we're getting there. I get quiet sometimes too when I focus, but I swear I can multitask with this. All right, there we have it. Baked with love. We'll throw that in with our cookies. We'll get to that shortly. And probably get rid of that. All right, now we can start kind of putting everything together. So let's go ahead. I just kind of want to start to lay out my cookies just so I'm getting a good coverage. So let's do like, I wanna make sure I use them all. Let's see. Let's 
Let's see. Oh, phooey, Justin, what are we doing? Two. No, mini, me, 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 me. We cannot say bad words. So I'm going to make sure we get some good coverage. Since I use those six, let's figure out a way to use the rest of these. I want these a little bit more staggered. I feel like this looks like a grid and I don't want that. All right, so let's see, we're gonna do like that. And then, like that. Sometimes arranging is the hardest part. Oh no, we're gonna put him over here so you can see his little hat. All right, and then That's going to work pretty nicely. And then I can put my sentiment kind of like in the middle or off to the side, depending on how I want to get this together. Well, this was supposed to be E. Why am I struggling with just the placement? This was supposed to be the easy part. Okay. That's honestly, that's pretty good. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get these glued down, grab some glue, do them one at a time. start staggering them a little like that. And then let's do this guy over here. Actually no, we'll put him right in the center. one into place. Try to make sure you can see her bow. And then, let's see, we'll do I have thoughts. I have thoughts. The glue gods are smiling upon me as well today because I'm not dealing with any clogs yet. All right, so we have that. I don't really wanna put him here because that's gonna be too repetitive. So we'll, be, we'll make it work. I could always fill it with an enamel dot or something. All right. 
perfect. So we've got our little cluster of cookies. And then I have to grab scissors. And we can start trimming off the edges. You can save these bits too, because you can fill in some gaps with them. All right. And then just perf. Perf, perf, perf. Okay, let me see. I'm just wondering if I do like, if I need anything else down there. That actually would work. So let's go ahead, put this down here. It is hard flower. It's always a chore, but it's okay. It's gonna look cute. And see, you can use these little bits to fill in little gaps. You already got them. I mean, otherwise, they're just going to get brushed off into the trash, you know? Hello, Patsy. Hope you're having a good night. What else we got? What else do we got? Let's do something right here. And Patsy's working on Christmas cards too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead right here. And I think that's, that's pretty good. That gives the illusion that I made a lot more cookies than I actually did. But hey, I made nine. Nine is a big number when it comes to having images prepared for crafting. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I have to say about that. Perfect. That looks pretty cute. All right, so I don't need any more of these little bits. You're very welcome, Heidi. I can't wait to see what you make. Now I've got, let's see, all right. All right, cool, cool, cool. My computer just, the screen is being funny. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do next is I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this to some glitter paper that's just slightly larger. This is like four and three, no, this is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Let's get this situated. And then I do have a pattern from the Merry Mint paper pack that I wanted to use. So we're gonna push this into place. issues today or computer issues rather but we're getting there we're getting there let's see hmm. all right so I've got this in place and then I'm gonna go ahead I want to put this I want to put it like right here we're gonna grab some foam tape and 
pop it in. All right. Just right there. And then let's add some enamel dots. We've got a couple, so we'll do like, we've got some reds and some pinks. Just kind of filling gaps, make it look like some sprinkles. here. I think that's pretty cute. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to get this onto a card base. I do have one with a top fold. So we're just gonna go ahead, add this on, and there you go. A super cute gingerbread, rather merry card that didn't take too much time to put together. It didn't require too much coloring. I think it's super cute. So let's just go over all the different products that I used to put this together. Now I did use the Gingerbread Pal stamp set um, that I did also heat emboss with snowfall embossing powder. I also used the Merry Mint paper just as a very thin border uh, and along with color inspiration for the project as well. So thank you guys so very much. I'll make sure to get a photo taken of this and upload it into the fan club soon in the next couple days or so. Um, but thank you guys all so, so very much for stopping by. I apologize regarding my technical difficulties. I don't quite understand what's going on with me and Facebook today. I must just not be friends with them. So thank you all so, so very much. I will be back later this month for one last Kindred Stamps Facebook Live with Justin in 2023. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going away in 2024. It just means it'll be the last time that you'll get to see me live this year because the year really is starting to come to a close. So thank you guys so very much for being here. I hope that you all have an absolutely wonderful upcoming holiday. I cannot believe that we are already looking at the end of the year and Christmas and all the other winter holidays upon us. So Merry Christmas to you and yours. Happy holidays. And I will see you for one last Facebook live on December 30th. Thank you guys so very much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.